the one thing I would say is just that you're part of um there's a man in the world, I think his name is Jim Collins. He writes these great books on companies and and he has an expression in in uh, one of them called a uh, a b hag b h a g all capital letters and it means a big hairy audacious goal and he says that successful companies in the world are those who have a big hairy audacious goal like you almost set the bar at something that is new and different and impossible in some ways seemingly impossible so you're you know you're in another country that isn't your culture and that isn't really even close to your culture although obviously there are commonalities across all human cultures so I'm sure you're doing your best and and the friends that I have who have went to um, other countries to teach a language you know this is a very kind of like whoa because your reference point usually is something that you're familiar with you've grown up with a sort of checking in with checking in with checking in with the people around you and now there's a whole different set of people around you so one of the things to consider even as I know it's like it's challenging you said you don't like the person you are you don't respect who you are it's like just to remember that that you're on an adventure you know and I know yeah your question was how do you appreciate the process of learning who you are and your natural changes while remaining true to yourself at the same time. I think the true to part is just knowing that this is a learning process. It's a constant learning process. Hearing the birds and, you know, thinking about this question. Different changes in the body, aging. So the true to, how do I remain true to myself is just to admit that I, I'm just learning. You know, it's like I'm doing my best and I'm just learning. I change all the time and, and rather than worry about it, I just go with it, which is a little easier even though it's chaotic. You know, if you piece together all the days, they look like a, a mess. But each day it's like, all right, all right, all right, all right. And that's the only way that I find to play with it that makes any sense is to learn from each of the changes. It might look schizophrenic or manic or inconsistent or contradictory from the outside, but on the inside it's like constantly learning about whatever it is, whatever little change that wants to happen, I'm just open. Like, okay. And then there's this, that still point that kind of doesn't move. Or you could say from which, yeah, blah, 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 it's all fucking nuts. <laughs> but there is, a, in this experience, there's kind of like a freeze. <laughs> and and then I find also, too, that part of the how do I appreciate the process is just kind of like staying really close to the reality that I don't know almost anything for certain. I'm not in charge of anyone else's experience. Sometimes I speak arrogantly, like I am, but that's just a way to try to feel safer. I don't know what it's like to be you or anyone else. I barely know what it's like to be me. So I think that part of the appreciation is sort of the humility or the vulnerability of like, wow, I, I, I'm doing my best. I don't have all the information. It doesn't look like there's another person on Earth that knows what's going on. So in some ways, you know, we're all doing this together. I Separate, together, separate, together. You know, you're not always here and I'm not always there. And in this little moment, <laughs> maybe there's some support or maybe there's some encouragement or maybe there's just some, hey, human, what's up? You know, it's helpful to remember you're on an adventure because that's what helps me. That's really how I appreciate the process is to go, oh, I'm on an adventure. Wow, okay. You know, and the, the hardest parts of my adventure up until now are the moments when I assert something for certain. Like I know anything about awakening or enlightenment or 
or, or any philosophical perspective or non-duality or what, what the best way to live is. I can take that tone and I notice that, at least at this point in my learning, that that's the most stressful thing I can do, is assume I know for sure what it's like to be anyone else. You know, this is one of those experiences that if you're, I don't know if you're keeping a journal or taking pictures, I assume you're, you know, well, whatever. I mean, only you know if you're doing those things. And it's, it's one of those things that you'll look back on, you'll be like, wow, you know, I learned that and that, or I learned all of this, or there was this one lesson, or I didn't learn anything and I know not to do that again, which maybe is what you learn. You know, that's the beauty of adventures like the one you're on. You know, to go to a country that's totally different from yours and to teach and to play and to kind of be in that place, you know, it's really beautiful. It's like a rite of passage. You know, even if, it, even if the day-to-day -day of it is kind of like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's helpful to see. Like, it's an adventure. Like anyone throughout history who set off to, do, to experience something they didn't know anything about. You know, they got to shit and eat and they get thirsty and, you know, they get horny and they got to sleep. And, you know, that's the daily day of, of our lives. And in the process of sort of the ordinary, there's this incredible thing of experiencing new things and finding their way. Just like you. Just like me. I think just like everyone. So the one thing that feels fairly clear is that you're not, you haven't made a mistake. You know, what I notice is that I, I really don't know myself. And I don't know... I know, the, I know the philosophical approach is, you know, you get rid of the myself and then it's all I and then seemingly you can write a book and give retreats. But I, I feel like I don't really know myself. You know, I don't think philosophy actually ends up help, helping with this life in that way that it seems like so much of the conversation is about these different beliefs or knowings or whatever. It's like, I don't, I don't, I've played that game and I suck at it. So I don't know. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I'm going to be. A couple of days ago, I, I said I'd stop making videos and here I am. You know, I don't know. And it doesn't look like there's anything I ha at stake. You know that sense you get sometimes when you're like, I have to protect the story of me. It's kind of like, I don't actually have to protect that story. I can just be raw and messy and chaotic and honest and authentic when I can feel it and catch the moments where I feel like I'm guilty or embarrassed or arrogant or... You know, kind of like all the stuff that really has to do with others. It's like, can I be kind and be patient? Other than that, though, what I find how I appreciate the process of learning who I am is not to listen to anyone else. Really not to listen to what they think I should be doing. And to catch the difference between what I naturally feel excited about and what culture tells me I should feel excited about. And then just to kind of stay close to that. And it's an adventure, <laughs> just like this. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.